what's up y'all it's Kermit Monet and welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be um, about my postpartum journey so far um, I am almost six months postpartum my baby is growing up so fast on me and it's like I actually I'm so emotional about it <laughs> and honestly that, that's probably like the postpartum but like I'm super uh, emotional about it but um anyway um i'm just gonna get right into the video so first first things first i felt like um i always knew like what i wanted to do when it came to like um breastfeeding and like you know like how i just wanted to go about um everything postpartum and like i've seen my mom breastfeed and all that stuff so i always had like a positive um a positive view on it so and thank god so far um i've been able to have a positive experience with it um but it is hard like and then especially since he's teething right now like he has two teeth coming in on the bottom so um he's been biting me sometimes uh <laughs> it's it's a lot but um I figured out how to like get past all the whole the whole biting thing so it doesn't necessarily bother me too much but it is a hard um thing because especially when he was a newborn like with him um feeding every two hours and um so obviously I have to wake up and honestly I do pump which um that's a lot of work too I feel like pumping and breastfeeding like alone is a job in itself like it takes a lot um I do pump but that's only for like just in cases like you know like if someone else needs to feed him or like if we're out somewhere and I need to have a bottle which I don't do that anymore but um because I, st I strictly breastfeed and he doesn't necessarily like the bottle but it's just for just in case, you know, and then sometimes I'll use it for a milk bath or whatever. Um, cause he, he does have eczema. So, um, I do have milk just in the freezer, but, um, breastfeeding for me personally, I know it's not positive for everyone, but for me personally, I love it. It's just, it's a lot of work, but I love it. And it's a amazing bonding experience that I have with him. Um, we're, besties like we're besties we're locked in so and i i do get like some people telling me oh um you know just wean him off of that you know it's gonna make it harder for you later on and it's like f first things first i don't ever let anyone sway me to do something else um so yeah but um Honestly, respectfully, I just, you know, either decline or I just say, okay. And I just keep doing what um, I feel like is best for me and my child because we're, we're loving it. We're loving the breastfeeding journey. And um, honestly, I'm not going to force him to get on a bottle. You know what I mean? Like, I, um, if he's comfortable breastfeeding that's what we're gonna do and I'm completely fine with it but you know that's that's just all I have about like breastfeeding like um luckily I don't I don't know what it's called I'll put it here I forgot what it's called but luckily I haven't dealt with that yet <laughs> hopefully I never will but um but yeah we're gonna continue this breastfeeding journey for a minute to like I'm pushing for when he's one I'm pushing till he's one um, if he wants to keep going, hey, by all means. But yes, I will be that mom. I don't care. So um, yeah, the whole breastfeeding thing, I love it. It's amazing. Um, now the the weight loss, I feel like that's immediately after. Like okay, the whole weight loss thing. I have I have good genes, I guess you know. Um, my mom and my grandmother, um, they both skinny, um, they were all belly, 
they immediately lost their weight. I kind of knew that I was going to be that way too, but I wasn't too sure like how quickly or whatever because I do have a whole other side of my family, my father's side of the family. They don't lose the weight that easily. So um, I didn't really know necessarily where I was going to fall. So, and I, I really did want to go back to my pre-baby size because um, for one, I'm not trying to buy a whole new wardrobe. That's one, because I had already started, like right before getting pregnant, I had just started reworking my wardrobe, buying all new clothes. I would have been so upset, so sad. But, um, and also because um, I had worked really hard on um, gaining the weight that I gained before being pregnant. And um, what's really hard right now is the fact that I lost all of that weight. The the weight that I gained purposely, everything. The weight that I gained from being pregnant, I lost all of it. So um, that's the only like really hard thing about it right now. And so it's just, cause like I really worked hard for that weight and I'm trying to get back to it um, as healthy as possible, like I did last time. So uh, I don't know, it was just, and I, I think it's associated with the postpartum depression, which we'll get into later, but I really feel like it's because of that. And I don't know, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to get, <laughs> get back to it. Cause it's, it's so sad. Like everyone is like, um, uh, praising me for, for losing the weight so quickly, but I'm just like, and, and, you know, a lot of people will always be like, oh, you have such a nice body, a nice figure and all that stuff. When I was super skinny, whole time I hated my body. So it's like it's like that all over again i'm like no i i don't like being this size i'm trying to get back to what i was before and like one day i actually lost like two pounds in just 24 hours that is not okay <laughs> that is not okay so um so yeah i'm dealing with that right now um i looked I'm trying not to like um, track my weight, but I did the other day and I am, I did gain about five pounds. So I'm, I'm glad about that. But um, it's just, I just want my weight back. I just want it back. And I just knew, I just knew I was about to keep all that pregnancy. Like, oh, like the curves, the and it's gone, but I'm gonna I'm get back to it. I'm gonna get back to it. The next thing that I've noticed, I'm going like literally in order of like this whole postpartum journey. So like the next thing after the weight loss, after I dropped everything, and it only took me like um, a month or so. It took me a month or so, but because for my mom, for my mom and my grandma, like they, they lost it when they was in the hospital still. It took me a month because, like I said, I have a whole nother side of family. I have a whole nother set of genes. So it did take me a month. But, and y'all, so I have to say this. A family member, and I'm, I'm married now. So a family member literally told me, like, four days after having my baby, oh, my gosh, you still look pregnant. I... I was so like surprised that that was even said that I couldn't even say anything back. Like I was just sitting there staring like, what? I thought I was crazy about it, but then I went to therapy. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to the therapy. But anyway, like I was saying, the next thing was my hair loss. Now. I thought I dodged a bullet. I thought I did. I was like, um, 
yeah i'm not dealing with postpartum hair loss you know i'm good whatever and then my baby hit three months my hair now i had my hair like i really wasn't messing with my hair i had braids when um i had them then when i took those out finally i had those braids for like two months i want to say then when i took those out i let my hair breathe a little bit then i did like some the the you know the the boho braids with like your natural hair i did that then i twisted up my hair i was not messing with my hair so i took the twist out to um do my wedding i wore my afro now when i took my twist out i realized i had it in for so long my hair started to um lock up so you know i'm combing it out you know it's a lot of shedding but i associated with oh i had my hair in these twists for a long time but then as i kept going through my hair like four sections of my hair right each section just like a big ball of hair just coming out of my head and i was like oh jesus so i was like okay whatever maybe it's not that serious i was still try, like in denial trying to be like oh no it's because of the twist it's because of the twist no babes mm. after my wedding you know i washed my hair did another little detangle girl more hair just got coming out coming out coming out coming out then i looked at my edges y'all it was worse than this but it was i have thick hair so it didn't really a lot of people don't even realize that how much hair i actually lost i have thick hair and my hair like normally my hair would not be like well it, it could be this flat but i don't know like touching my hair it just feels thinner and i don't like that <laughs> like my hair just kept coming out in like literal like balls like each section balls of hair balls of hair and um so i was like yo i need to start taking my prenatal vitamins again like i had stopped taking them i, I went and bought a whole new jar of prenatal vitamins uh everything um so when i started taking them that's when my edges started growing back in um my hair stopped shedding as much it still sheds but like when i had straightened my hair from the last video like i swear every time i brushed my hair every time i like just went like this hair was just falling out but it, it doesn't do that anymore but it, it's just i i was not prepared for that and i was literally about to be in tears so i was like yo i worked so hard uh, for my hair to grow back because after my big chop like and now it's falling off falling out i <laughs> i had to nip that in the butt asap i had to check on my son but i had to nip that butt i had to nip that in the butt asap because like <sighs> mm -mm. But no one noticed that I lost all that hair, which is, I guess, good, I guess. But um, I lost so much hair. <laughs> anyway, um, so hopefully, I, I know for future babies, to keep, taking, to keep taking your prenatal vitamins. I swear on everything. Keep taking them because, like, my nail health was, like, declining as well like my nail tech was doing my nails and my nails are like my real nails feel like acrylic themselves like they're really strong all that stuff so she was doing my nails she was like why are your nails so thin like like they're breaking so e they were breaking so easily and she's like you need to take your vitamins and all that so i was like yeah because like literally when Especially when, like, when you're breastfeeding, when you're breastfeeding, your baby takes all the nutrients out of your body, out of your body. And there was a point where I was not eating as much as I needed to. I wasn't taking my vitamins, none of that. So all of my nutrients was going to my son. And so 
I was like, yeah, girl, take care of yourself because this is a mess. You look a mess. Anyway, so this this video, I'm trying to speed it up. Uh, I don't want no like 30 minute video. So the next thing, the last thing is my postpartum depression. I did not even realize I had postpartum depression. Like I had it. I don't know almost like this whole time almost the whole time postpartum and it definitely affects like how i even um maneuver and do things and so um the reason i don't even know like i didn't realize i had it like my mom noticed it in me because she had postpartum depression with um two of my siblings so she was like I think you need to go get counseling. I was like, girl, for what? Like, I'm good. I'm good. Because, like, honestly, really, I am so happy um, when it pertains to my son. And that's what I was thinking about. I was like, yeah, I'm happy. I'm fine. But I wasn't thinking about everything else. So she's like, Karima, you're not okay. Because, like, I guess, like, I just wasn't, like, acting like myself. So, um, and I was just like, I was just like super emotional with things that like and yeah it could still be like just because of postpartum but like just overly emotional about, mm, what the hell was that overly emotional about things that I would not normally be emotional about like just just snapping at everything all that and I still have trouble with that but it was like really worse um so and like my patience was running so thin. Like my little siblings, they they are um, well now they're seven and three, and so they love being up under me, and that's how all my siblings were and are with me. So um, they just love being up under me so much, and being that I literally have a baby, I'm touched out sometimes. And I just be like, yo, I need y'all to like back up, back up. And I feel like I'd be hurting their feelings and I'd be feeling so bad. But it's just like, it's not even like that. Like, I don't want to be around them. It's just my patience. It's just too much, too much, too much. Um, my mom was like, she, she didn't even say anything. Like, well, she said something like a month and a half postpartum. But then she finally was like, look, you need to, she's like, you need to go and make an appointment because you you need to have some type of therapy so that's what i did and i think i've been in therapy for like a month or so now and honestly it's working um i still have trouble but it's definitely working because like i don't know like i just feel so sad sometimes and it's like I don't want to say it's like how it was when I was a teenager, when I was depressed and all that, because I was, I, that, I was down bad, but it's just, I don't know, I just be so sad sometimes, and you know, sometimes it just, feel, it just feels like even if you're not doing it alone, it feels like you're doing it alone, because like, especially since I am the default parent, especially because like I breastfeed and all that stuff, I'm, I'm the default parent. So it it be feeling like that a lot. And yeah, like people be like, oh, I can help you out and all that stuff. But it's just like, I just, I I don't necessarily need help from other people. Um, that, That's not the problem. Cause for, for one, like there, there's this thing that I'm dealing with right now where it's just like in the black community, uh, I don't know what it is in other communities, but in the black community, it's like, oh, don't don't try and tell me how to take care of a baby. I know how to take care of a baby. You don't have to give me like this list or whatever. And it's like, no, but this is my baby. This is how I want him to be taken care of, this and that. And I just don't trust that anybody is going to fully do what I said. And I'm just thinking about that. And... I mean, some people will, but it's just like, 
the older ones, like the, our parents, grandparents. And I just do not have time for that. Like, they're just certain, because I'm trying to break generational curses. And I don't feel like that's going to be respected. So I feel like, I just, I don't want that help. Honestly, I never asked for, I don't want that type of help. And um, so they're just like, oh, you know, we can help you. Can help. No, I'm good. What I do need help with <laughs> is because I feel like I feel like it's only being said because everybody just wants to see the baby. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if that's just just my my thought, my um my overthinking or whatever. But I just feel like it's just because they just want to see the baby, not necessarily because they want to help me. And um, wow, well, is the depression really showing right now? <laughs> like okay that's what i feel like but what i actually need help with is hey you can come over help me do whatever i need done around the house or um if i need something from the store like so i don't have to take him out especially since it's so cold right now um just so i don't have to take him out could you go and grab something that we may need or whatever like you know i need that type of help i don't need help necessarily taking care of him you know yeah so the thing is i did have um he has been babysat before by my sister-in-law um my mom and like it, it went well it went really well the only thing was like with my sister-in-law and i told her i was like i'm so nervous because like they live um, in a different city, county, and there's a bridge separating. And my husband wanted to take us on a date. And so, like, the bridge, <laughs> like, if a boat was to come, like, say I needed to get to him and, like, ate, like, quickly as possible. And there was, like, a boat coming and, like, the bridge is up and I, I can't I can't get to him. That's what I was thinking about the whole time. It wasn't about if she was going to take good care of him. I knew she he, he was fine. It was that part. And I was just like, oh my God, like I'm just so far from him. And and I wasn't even far, but it was just like. <laughs> and that was when he was six, seven weeks. Uh, Jesus, I was having a time about that, but. It's just I don't I don't want him getting babysat right now, and everyone's just looking at me like, Karima, you need to like they're trying to force it, and I'm like, give me some time because I do have separation anxiety. Okay, I have to get my baby. <laughs> so, so yeah, hey honey bun. So yeah, um. It just, hey, what was I saying? I'm very forgetful too. Hey, all right, I gotta feed him. I'm very forgetful. Uh, that's another thing. Like I have baby brain like so bad, but um, oh, um, what's that? Yeah, I have separation anxiety. I don't like being away from him for too long. And um, that is my homework right now for therapy. <laughs> Trying to see if I can at least do an hour or whatever. Um, I think I could do an hour. Um, I would still be thinking about him heavily, but, um, and calling and checking. Because I'm gonna just constantly be thinking like, is he okay? Is he okay? Does he need me? Does he want me? Um, Cause he does want me a lot and I just, I go and I get him and I be a mom. And it's like a lot of people, um, specifically like in our family, like tell uh, tell me like, you gotta let him, like basically trying to make me, make him be independent. Force me to force him to be independent. And it's like, do you know how crazy that sounds? Like he's a baby. He literally has to depend on me and um it's just 
it's like really annoying because like for example my grandfather he uh my baby was crying and i knew why he was crying and it was something that i needed to do for him and so um he was like you know because my dad had him he was like you know you gotta let him cry um you can't always go and pick him up and i for some reason like just me forgetting that i'm a grown adult and this is my child i just immediately i listened to him but then i was like no my baby needs me and i went and i got him and i did what i need to do to calm him down and you know he calmed down and um it's just like things like that like i just be like i need everybody to realize that this is my son i know him better than all of y'all <laughs> i know what he needs I know what his different cries mean and if I want to go and comfort him that I, I can do that I'm his parent and I just want to let him know that like I don't want to get emotional saying this but I just want him to know that I am here for him whenever he needs me and I'm here for him whenever he needs me. Um, I love him always. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I start crying, I ain't got time for that. What? So yeah, um, that is, that's really it for, um, for this video. Um, I'm, I'm really trying to get through this. <laughs> Through this postpartum journey um hopefully the postpartum depression and separation anxiety doesn't last long yeah and i realized you guys never met him so luca bear luca He's not going to be on this channel very much, but <laughs> Luca, 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 look, 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 hi. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. So, um, that is it for this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.